Hi everybody, welcome to this week's video. So this week I wanna be talking about just books that will they will make you like reading. You know, if your goal for 2022, I don't know when this video is going up. This video might be going up in February. We're gonna see. It is Jan it is currently January right now as I'm filming this. And you know, one of the biggest like New Year's resolutions that people have is always like to read more. I think people think sometimes reading is like for like intellectuals, like, you know, that like they read. However, I beg to differ because some of the stuff that I read is just like, it's so fun and it's so good. I'm not out here reading. It's like, what's a fancy book? But yeah, reading is really fun. And I think especially in our world where like, I'm always looking at my computer. My computer's looking at me right now. A camera's looking at me right now. And I have my phone right here. It is such a nice escape to grab a book, especially with online school and just like what I do, which is this. A lot of my life is on a computer. So to have like a tangible book in my hands is a very nice experience. I'm gonna be honest with you. Most of what I read are thrillers. So so if thrillers are not like not super your cup of tea, I'll do like the other ones first. Starting with a book that is not a uh, thriller is this book. <laughs> this is like my favorite book ever. So this is uh, the book Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. And it is a memoir about his life. This came out like two years ago and it was big news. And if you love Queer Eye, you're gonna love this book. I absolutely love Jonathan Van Ness. Like I just think that he is so inspiring because he's like so happy. But once I read this book, like you just get so, first of all, the book is hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. But then you get like these really heartwarming stories. And I personally found it really interesting because I grew up in a very liberal area. Like I'm not saying that like everything was perfect here because like that's absolutely not true. I don't know. I, I don't wanna like sound like, I, I'm just gonna be honest. Like I had friends come out to me in high school and like it wasn't really like a big thing. Like it was just kind of like, oh cool. Like, and he grew up in the 90s during the AIDS pandemic or epidemic. I don't actually know. I feel like it gave me a deeper understanding for what people not that long ago went through. So I really, I really recommend that book if you've had an experience like I did growing up where it wasn't really I've seen you know I've seen TV I've seen you know things like that that explain it but this book was a really it was just like really eye-opening and I really enjoyed it also just because of the humor and stuff like that but it was also it taught me a lot so yeah that's what books should do um the next book I constantly am recommending this book um and I want to reread it but I, I don't have time right now and I I can't carry another book with me to Scotland because then I have to carry it back and that's the whole thing so but this book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue I got this for Christmas in 2020 I read this book in 48 hours. Basically, it's about a girl in... 1714 France and in a moment of desperation she basically makes a deal with the devil and you follow her journey from 1714 to modern day New York and it is incredible. I just couldn't put it down. It was one of those books that I flew through and a book like this can be intimidating because like, you know, she thick. However, I find that books like this, like when you really wanna know the ending, they just go by so fast. So I would definitely recommend this book. Okay, the next book is going to be Kristen Hanna's Firefly Lane. So I read this book probably, oh my gosh, probably like four years ago at this point. It is not a thriller. It's basically about a female friendship from the time they're in high school to when they're older, like they have kids and stuff. So it's it's just a really good book about friendship. I think that this is probably one of the most like intricate depictions of female friendship in like literature that I've read in a long time. I don't know, like I think when you watch like movies from like the 2000s, you're like, hmm, like this isn't complex. Like the relationships that I have with my friend, there, there is intricacy, okay? And this book just really captures that intricacy in a friendship so well. The show couldn't, I couldn't get through 10 minutes of the show. The show is not indicative of this book. This book is beautiful. The show, awful. I don't know why they decided to make it the way that they made it, but like I literally couldn't get through five minutes of that show. It, I didn't, I maybe, maybe I, I was wrong. Maybe I should go re watch the show, but I didn't want it to ruin one of my favorite books. So I didn't. Okay, so I just read this book. Oh my God, this is becoming a movie in March, I think with Mila Kunis. It's called Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. And I flew through this book. So basically it's about, it goes, it's one of those books that goes back and forth. And it's about a girl who goes to like a prep school and she like has this seemingly perfect life, but there are things that you find out about her past and it's very shocking. I was gap mouth, like wide open reading this book. I, I couldn't put it down. So if you are trying to get into to thrillers. This one, yeah, it's it's modern day really. And I would issue a trigger warning a little bit for this book, but look into it. And I think that it was just 
was really good. And then the other book that I just read, I just finished this one over break, was The Last Thing He Told Me. But basically this woman gets married to this man and he has a daughter who's like in high school, but she, it, yeah, it's just his daughter. He disappears one day, but he leaves his wife a note saying protect her. And she has to find out what happened to her husband, why he went away. It's a nice book to explore the relationship between step parents and stepchildren. However, it weaves in the, uh, the mystery, which is just very compelling. So I highly recommend this book too. Okay, now getting into the ones that I can't wave the book around. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to recommend is just like an author. So I love a good thriller and I read, like there was just like one summer where I read like all of Ruth Ware's books. So Ruth Ware is a British writer and she writes thrillers set in England. I think two of them are becoming shows. Woman in Cabin 10 is becoming a show and then, I th or a movie. And then In a Dark Dark Wood is also becoming a movie. I don't know when. So if you're looking for like a good thriller author, I would start with like, if you're a beginner, like I would start with like Ruth Ware. In a Dark Dark Wood, it was really, really good. Very compelling. It's about like a bridal shower that goes awry and there's a murder and things like that. And then Cabin 10 is another like murder mystery thriller set on a yacht going to, she's like a travel writer, I think. And the boat is going to Sweden or some, some Nordic country, I forget. But the setting was just really chilling and a very interesting book. I hadn't read a book like that in a while because sometimes like the thriller genre that can, it can get a little repetitive, but that one I really, really liked. And then one that like is kind of underrated and I feel like maybe people like don't really like this one as much. I personally is one of my favorite Ruth Ware books was The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And this is very, it's very like, uh, have you seen that movie? If you've seen that movie, um, Knives Out, it's very much Knives Out vibe where there's like a will involved and a family and there's all of these connections that you don't realize. I personally, I absolutely loved that book and I would 100% recommend it. I also read The Lion Game. That one, I don't know if I like loved that one. I read that on the plane to Scotland actually last time. Um, I don't know if I absolutely loved that book. It, yeah, I don't know. So the next like author I'm gonna recommend is Gillian Flynn. So like she, yeah, you've heard of Gone Girl. If you're like not into thrillers, like maybe you haven't, but this is like one of the biggest books and there was a movie with like Ben Affleck and the other lady I can't think of. If you, no one has ever recommended this to you, which I don't, I don't know how that happened, but I'm gonna recommend this to you, Gone Girl. However, more like underrated, they made an HBO show with it with Amy Adams, is Sharp Objects. And this is probably my favorite Gillian Flynn book over Gone Girl. I, that one was scary. Like I, I think I read this book in like three hours. I was on a plane actually, again, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying book. However, you will finish it so fast. And I keep saying that as like a good thing. I'm like, I'm like not trying to shade these authors. Like <laughs> to me, if I finish a book really fast, like that means I like absolutely just like devoured it. It was so good. Also, they're like making a show right now called like the woman in the window across the street from the train or something like that. And it's like a spoof off of these books with Kristen Bell. And I'm so excited. <laughs> like I love this genre, but like I want it to be called out. You know what I mean? Like I'm ready. It's time. Okay, the other thriller that I would like 100% recommend is a book called The Guest List. I read this last spring and again, I finished it like in a car ride because I, w I just was hooked. So it's basically about a wedding party and I feel like it takes place in Scotland. Am I making that up? I might be making that up or Ireland. It's somewhere like that, but it's sort of like a whodunit type of thing, like, like a Knives Out like situation. If you've ever seen a movie, I keep bringing that up, but like it applies a lot apparently. <laughs> it is like a wedding party and there's a murder, but then like there's all these backstories from like their college days, all the, you know, Know, there's some scandal there's some there are some rumors and it all gets you know uncovered throughout the book and that one was so good last couple books are going to be I mean, like a historical fiction i don't even know i don't know what to call these so the seven husbands of evelyn hugo again you've heard if you are in like book youtube i'm sure everybody talks about this book but just a great read if you watch the show hollywood it very much gave me hollywood vibes because it's about i think it's set in like the, the 50s or the 60s and it's about a movie star named evelyn hugo and you go through like her career in Hollywood ha where she had seven husbands and you get the story behind it. Then the last book I wanna talk about is The Vanishing Half. So this was like, literally if you pass any bookstore right now, like no matter the country, this book is in the window. Yeah, so this book is a basically, it's about two sisters who are black and they grow up in like a rural Southern town. And it goes from the 1950s, to maybe the 2000s, something like that. And it follows the journey that these women took 
hook. It, oh, they're twins. They're twins too. Sorry, I forgot that part. So one of them goes off and basically passes as white and then the other one just like lives her life normally. And it's just basically like about their journey and it was just a very interesting read. I learned a lot from it, but again, it's just like a very compelling book because it's all about how the sisters reunite and find each other and just the way that their lives went. There's some romance, there's a little mystery, some intrigue. I just, I really loved this book. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to anybody who wants to get into reading. And if you liked this video, give it a like. Um, if you didn't, just leave. Get out of here. Go live your life. I'm just kidding. Um, you can dislike it, but um, then I'll be sad. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. I should just not bring that up. Okay. <laughs> um, give this video a like. Okay. It's thank you so much for watching all right everyone thank you so much for watching this video um thank you so much for uh, oh my god all right. all right everyone thank you so much for watching i hope you liked this video and that it um gave you some good options to start you know your reading journey um um please subscribe if you haven't already um i post new videos every friday about study abroad vlogs um you know just life in general those kinds of things if you're a college lady or a college gentleman so am i so we have that in common so cute of us we're literally so relatable i don't know what i'm what am i saying <laughs> i don't know okay thank you for watching <laughs> Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-